um, there, there, there have been a great debate among Christians on, uh, on the best possible ways to witness to Jehovah's Witnesses, how you can preach to them, how you can tell them the gospel, because these people are, they, they are very stuck to what they believe. So how are you going to witness to Jehovah's Witnesses that uh, Jesus is God and that uh, they need to be saved? You have to understand that Jehovah's Witnesses, they say that they are the only true Christians. But um, we understand that they are not neither Protestants or Catholics. They, they are not either of, either of those. But they say they are Christians. And uh, we understand that the fundamental doctrine, doctrinal issue about the JWs or Jehovah's Witnesses, which distinguishes them from the Orthodox Christianity, is the Trinity. The Trinity. You know these people, they say that uh, the doctrine of the Trinity is a pagan teaching, uh, but they misinterpret it, saying that the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit must be three gods and uh, they actually agree with the trinity doctrine when it is says that the father <laughs> the father is not the holy spirit and the holy spirit is not the son that, that one they agree but they don't agree if all three are god they say there are three gods okay so now these people they imagine that they need to prove this to people who believe in trinity or trinity Trinitarians, and they fail to grasp how the three persons comprise the one being of God. And so they come up with the idea of a big God and uh, two little gods. <laughs> and they say Jesus was uh, created, that is what we call Arianism, and that uh, he was Michael the archangel, and that Jesus' body was not resurrected. Have you ever heard this story of them saying that Jesus is the arch, archangel Michael? Uh, all those kind of things they say. And they say that Jesus was not uh, uh, resurrected. It is, sim it, it, it is simply disappeared and he rose as a spirit creature. And they say the Holy Spirit is not a person but is Jehovah's active force of energy. That Jesus, uh, the Holy Spirit, just an energy. And Jesus never rose from the death. He just disappeared and became a spirit. Things like that. So these are some of the uh, heresies that you hear with the Jehovah's Witnesses. And uh, because they say Jesus is a demigod, and uh, they say that uh, Jesus is not God, their understanding of salvation, the understanding of salvation and atonement is very wrong. They say Jesus, who was a perfect man, died only to atone for the sin of Adam, and that when we die, our death pays penalty or atones for our own sin. Now, I, I don't think this one is true. Because they, they, they say only some around 10,000 Jehovah's Witnesses today, uh, probably if you, if you read their doctrines, only about 10,000 Jehovah's Witnesses today can possibly claim to be born again and uh, have some heavenly hope. The rest, they say they don't want to go to heaven to be with the Lord, but they want to live forever on a paradise earth. This is what they call the paradise earth or restorationalism, Rest, restor, restoration, whatever. So anyway, these people, they believe if they remain faithful and obedient till the end of the millennial reign, uh, that is the millennial reign of Jesus, they will earn the right to be declared righteous. And that's why they have to keep on striving with no assurance of salvation. And uh, only today's remnant, this is what they call the remnant, the 144,000, can say they, they are in the new covenant and that Jesus Christ is their mediator. All, they say, that all others must be obedient to the leaders of the watchtower, the leaders of the watchtower. 
society and its governing body. And if they wish to survive a Magedon, this is a must. So with these people to disagree with, with what the governing body says is basically to disagree with Jehovah God. Because uh, they say he uses them as his sole channel of communication to dispense the truth. I don't know what kind of truth they, they, they try to say. Only they saw, they say that is only them who saw uh, uh, with spiritual eyes of discernment that Christ Jesus started to rule from heaven in around 1914 as an invisible second presence. You remember the, the lies that they, they, they gave from their leaders, one of their main leaders. Also, they say that Christ Jesus will never return to earth but will remain in heaven there to rule with 144,000 over the earth. So when you look at something like this, this is what the organization looks like. They say it's Jehovah God, then Jesus after God, who is the head of the Christian congregation. Then after Jesus, we have the faithful and discreet slave class. Uh, these are the ones that uh, Jesus has appointed over all his belongings. And they quote Matthew 24, 45 to 47. Then they have the governing body, uh -huh, the watchtower. These are the elders, those those guys, these, these guys, uh, you know, putting themselves in that governing body. I wonder who elects them. Is it Jesus himself or something? And then now we have the ministerial servants. These are the guys who go knocking in people's doors and they tell them if they want to, you know, do their weird Bible studies and uh, all, all those kind of things. So now, having understood that, eh, and uh, with all these unbiblical proofs, or on biblical uh, beliefs, where does one begin to witness to a Jehovah's Witness? Where can we start? It's, it seems almost impossible to understand. Now, where do we start, my friends? But I'll tell you there's one place that you can start, one beginning. You have to begin uh, with the person of Jesus Christ, whose deity is a foundation of Christianity. Jehovah's Witnesses, they are unable to grasp the significance of Jesus' death and why they must be born again in order to have their sins forgiven. Before they can put all their trust in the finished work of Jesus Christ, they have to understand that they are not saved. That's one thing you have to tell them. They have to understand that, hey man, you're not saved which means they are presently lost in their sins. So it's very good to tell them the gospel first because no witness, uh, no, no witness has the assurance of salvation, which is the gift of the Holy Spirit to those who belong to the Father through Christ. We have a gift, my friends, and that gift is the gift of the Holy Spirit to all who believe. You see, the Bible tells us in Romans 8, 16, that the Spirit itself beareth witness with our spirit. So we have the Holy Spirit speaking to our spirit that we are the children of God. You see, this is capital S, meaning the Spirit of God, bearing witness with our spirit, small s, meaning our own spirit. So the Holy Spirit speaks to our spirit and tells us that we are the children of God. So now, it's very important to tell them the gospel first. You tell them, hey guys, do you know who Jesus is and why he had to come here on earth? Because the full deity of Jesus Christ can only be revealed to them by the Holy Spirit, whom they relate to some commodity status like electricity. And they say, no, the Holy Spirit is just any other thing. You see, they, they say, ah, the Holy Spirit is just some force, it's just something. <laughs> they say that the Holy Spirit is not, not a person. I, I really wonder how. So it's good to tell them the gospel. You tell them that the man Jesus. You tell them first the bad, the bad news before you tell them the good news. What was the bad news? The bad news is that we were born in a perfect world, but Adam 
Adam sinned against God by eating the forbidden fruit. And through that one man, Adam, sin entered the world. So we have been sinners and we are children of Adam. So sin has flown with the genealogy and all that. And we have been born sinners over and over. That's the bad news and we are separated from God and there is nothing we can do about it. But the good news is, while we were still sinners 2,000 years ago, Jesus, who is God himself, he came and he dwelt with man. He dwelt with us. John 1, 14. He dwelt with us. Let me just show you this. So that he came to remove the sin which was here. Let me, let me just first show you. John 1, uh, John 1, 1. Let me show you that Jesus is God and he came here. This is about the deity of Christ. In the beginning was the word. Okay. You can see capital W meaning the word Jesus. And the word, or this person called word, we are going to prove who word was, was with God. So in the beginning, word was there, and the word was with God, and the word was God. You see? So this, this being called the word here, whoever it is, eh, we are going to prove, then it means that the word was in the beginning, and the word was with God, and the word was God. So who is this word? Let's come to verse 14. And the word was made flesh. So it means that whosoever is called word became flesh. And he was in the beginning and he was God. So basically meaning, if word is God, then God became flesh. And he dwelt among us. And we beheld his glory. And the glory of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. So whoever word is, if word is God, then it means God came and became flesh. So this is very important to tell these people. You tell them that, hey, you understand one thing? While you are still sinners, Jesus became flesh. And then John uh, 3, verses 16, it tells us the reason why he became flesh. This is the reason. The Bible says, now we have understood that word is God. So God himself became flesh in the form of Jesus. So if Jesus became flesh, what was the reason? For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, Jesus, the word who was with God, that whosoever believes in him will not perish but have everlasting life. So Jesus became flesh so that he can bring us eternal life. Because this one is very well explained. Adam brought separation from God and sin, and we died. But the word who is Jesus came for this reason. For God sent not his son into the world, to condemn the world, you see, Jesus was not coming to condemn us, but that the world through him might be saved. Are you seeing the point? So he did not come to condemn us. He did not come to just uh, save Adam alone, like the, the, the Jehovah's Witness say. He came so that whosoever will believe in him will not perish, but shall have everlasting life. And you have to understand that he that believeth on him, who believes in the word, God, Jesus, is not condemned. But he that believeth not is condemned already because you still have the sin of Adam. You are still condemned if you don't believe in him, if you don't believe that he came to rescue you because he has not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. That was the reason. That's the reason why Jesus came. And that's why we have the gospel. 2,000 years ago, while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. So that if you believe in him, then now you'll have life because you've been dead in your sins from the sins from the time of Adam. Adam is your father. Remember, we are, you were born in the image of Adam. We are born in the image of Adam. We're not born in the image of God. Adam was born in the image of God. But us, what happened to us? Who we, Adam sinned against God. And he became a fallen state. And all his children are born in his image. See, and Adam lived 130 years and begat a son in his own, what? In his own likeness after his image. Not the image of God, the image of Adam, the image of sin, and called his name Seth. Are you seeing the point here? So we are not born in the image of God. We are born in the image of Adam, the fallen state. And unless you can be saved through the gospel, believing in Jesus, you can never get the image of God. 
Are you seeing the point? So you're still condemned. And that's what they don't understand. That's the point where they don't understand. So how do you believe? How do you change and get this image of uh, Jesus? By believing the gospel, understanding that, oh, I didn't know. I understand now that Jesus died for my sins so that through his blood, through faith in him, I can be saved. I can be changed. Now, once you understand that fact, all you need to do is confess to God what you have understood and what you have believed. Because confession is basically telling Jesus, Jesus, now I understand that you died for my sins. You were buried and rose again the third day according to the scriptures. And you did this so that I can be saved. So that's how salvation is all about. You just, uh, you, you first understand that you're lost. Five points. You understand that you're lost. You look for the gospel. This gospel, 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4. And after you look for the gospel, you hear the gospel and you understand the gospel. And then you believe the gospel and you confess what you have believed. So the gospel is very simple. Just know you're lost, hear the gospel, understand the gospel, believe the gospel, and confess the gospel. That's what these people, they don't understand. So the full deity of Jesus Christ can be revealed to these Jehovah's Witnesses by the Holy Spirit once they get saved. If they are not saved, they will not understand all these things. It will be so confusing for them. How can the Father be the Holy Spirit? How can the Holy Spirit, you know, it doesn't, I, I mean, how can the Father be God and the Holy Spirit God and the Son God? Now think about it. Eh? Let me give you a good picture. Now, your body, you know you have three parts, right? You have the your body, your soul and your spirit your body is what we see right now and uh, your soul looks exactly like you and is immortal and when you die your soul is the one which will live forever either in heaven or in hell now take the picture do you hear the bible saying that uh, jesus is the image of the invisible god so god we can put it like the way the soul is that's why you cannot see God when you're alive. It's not possible. The same way you cannot see your soul. You have your soul, but you can't see it. It looks exactly like you. And also we have the spirit. The spirit is, it is in the soul, okay? It's exactly, it's, it's like when you take a, bal uh, a balloon and you fill it with water. That water, or you fill it with air, that air is the spirit, it is in the shape of the balloon. If the balloon has uh, three points, it will have three points. So it looks exactly. So that's the Holy Spirit. And, and these three cannot work. Just the same way a ball cannot work without three points. The hard side, a ball usually has uh, three parts. The, 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 the hard part, the outer cover. Then it has the tube, the tube inside. And then it has the air. That's exactly how God... The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit is like. So Jesus is the image of the invisible God. And that's exactly why they, the three of them, they are one. But with God, he can separate himself. You see, for us, we cannot separate ourselves. Our, our body, our soul, and spirit cannot separate itself. But with God, the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, they, could, they can separate themselves into three parts. Remember when Jesus was coming to be baptized, Jesus, the, the, the God, the Son, was in the river Jordan being baptized. And uh, dropping down was the Holy Spirit in form of a dove coming. And up in heaven, the Father was saying, behold, this is my beloved Son. You see, they had separated themselves. The Father was in heaven, the Holy Spirit was in the sky coming down. And Jesus, God, the Son, was down in river jordan you see they could separate themselves but for us we can't then that makes the whole difference so these three they are one they are one so we have to understand that fact so holy spirit is not uh, a thing he is a person and he has feeling he has a mind he has a will and all that that's why the bible says in ephesians 4 30 do not grieve the holy spirit by which you are sealed unto the day of redemption so the holy spirit he has a feeling he feels grieved whenever you, you do something wrong. So, 
Can we call that a force? Something with feelings? No, I don't think so. Now, uh, one thing we have to understand, as we witness to the Jehovah's Witnesses, we must do it with uh, Christian love and with compassion. Remember, they have been deceived and they believe a false gospel. Yet many have a genuine love for God and are utterly sincere in their beliefs. One thing, don't be afraid of them, because the Bible tells us in the book of uh, 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 First John, let me show you, 4 verse uh, 17, the Bible tells us, don't be afraid, don't be afraid. Let's, uh, oops, First uh, John 4 17, I don't know if I've typed the right thing. First John 4, 17. Yes. It says, Herein is our love made perfect, that we may have boldness in the day of judgment, because as he is, so we, we are in this world. So the same way as Jesus was, and as Jesus is right now, after his resurrection, the same way we are in this world. We have died with Christ, we have resurrected with Christ. So we are like him, even right now here. So there is no fear in love. When you love someone, go and tell them, hey, this is, this is what I feel. And I want to tell you the truth because I love you. And we have the love of Christ because the Bible says there is no fear in love. You will not uh, fear to tell someone that, hey, my friend, you're lost and I want to help you out because there is and you're fearing, oh, will they judge me? No, there's no fear in love. But perfect love casteth out fear. Because fear has torment. When you fear, that person that you really love will be tormented in hell. He that feareth is not made perfect in love. We love him because he loved us first. Are you seeing the point here? So you have to understand that there is no fear in Christianity. Go and tell the people what you understand. Okay, but tell them with what? With love and compassion. Let them know how much you care about their eternal salvation. And share your Christian testimony. Testimony is very important. Share your Christian testimony with them. Tell them, this is how I came to understand. I was lost, but God helped me out to understand. And now here I am. This is what really happened. Share to them your Christian testimony. Talk to them, discuss spiritual matters with them, but do not allow them to conduct what they describe as a Bible study. That they are, they are, they are, they are kind of Bible study. They start making you read all these books because <laughs> all, all, all these kind of things. Because be aware, be aware of those kind of literature that they they will try and tell you. Okay, let's do a Bible study. We tell you about Watchtower and all those kind of things because. They will not read any non-watchtower literature. They won't. They will always tell you, let's read our watchtower things and all that, or attend a church a service of the Jehovah's Witness and things like that. And they will only accept what the Bible says. The Bible, the new uh, living, the new world translation Bible, which is a complete heresy. It has been altered to reflect their theology. So if you have to read the Bible, make sure you just get a good King James Bible. Don't agree to read this Bible. They, it's corrupted. It's corrupted with their theology. And many verses in the New Testament, uh, that New World Translation, whatever, Bible, New Testament part, which points to the deity of Christ, they have been changed to support their view that only partial deity can be ascribed to him. So you have to be careful also don't read from their books. Read from the true King James Bible, okay? Because when you tell them about the deity of Christ, it always comes to as a surprise to them uh, because they don't understand. They're wondering, how can it be? How can Jesus be God and all those kind of things? But remember, remember you have to display the fruit of the Spirit and use Bible as a basis for uh, uh, for your faith, the true Bible. Remember in the book of Hebrews 4.12, it tells us, for the work of God is quick and powerful and sharper than two double-edged sword, piercing to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit. Okay? 
and of the joints and marrow and are designer of the thoughts and intents of the heart so the bible is very powerful when you use the real bible and you speak in truth and love and uh, showing the fruits of the holy spirit kindness modesty patience peace chastity goodness faithfulness self-control you know you have all these fruits my friends nothing is impossible nothing is impossible okay so you make sure that you direct all your conversation to the person of christ the person of jesus christ who jesus christ is okay make sure you move and tell them hey jesus 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 and you explain to them so they cannot continue being lost and confused but if you try to talk about uh, uh, any other angle uh, for sure it will be very difficult for you okay so don't also allow them to lead you down with their uh, i know this is something that they always like to lead people down into this is the uh, the, the, the the whole Armageddon, surviving how to survive Armageddon so that you can live later in uh, you know in paradise earth this is not the gospel my friends okay so they'll try to tell you oh these are will survive we put some dry foods in some basement some uh, bunkers and all those kind of things so th th those are we know those are lies please stay away from all that above all else pray for them pray for them because i know they are lost but mm -hmm. with the uh, with god everything is possible okay so if you enjoyed these videos please give them a like and also you can uh, subscribe to watch more videos and also uh, be able to hit the notification button so that you don't miss any new video whenever we post we'll always uh, tell you and likewise in the description below we have a couple of other channels outside the youtube you can go and check them out and also share to your friends and uh, i hope it will be a blessing and also if you are a jehovah's witness please i'm praying for you this is not to condemn you or to pull you down but it's to tell you that jesus loves you jesus loves you god bless you and have a good time